All right, guys, so I'm sitting here with my new uh, tank of discus, and I have noticed that the blue diamond has really started to kind of go dark, and as well as my leopard skin. Just sitting right there in the back. Don't know if it's male or female, but they are cleaning a spot on the wall in the back, and that is an indication of egg laying activity. Don't want to spook them out too much, um, but there you go. Got some egg laying activity starting to go on in here, guys. I'll keep you updated. So all of the eggs, with the exception of those ones that are white, are actually fertilized. They're all yellow and they're all amber, which means they're fertilized. I can see four eggs that are white in color if I back up a little bit, you can see that they're not fertilized. And that right there means that my water conditions for breeding are perfect. So let's uh, let's talk about that for a okay, minute, guys. Okay, So what we just saw was a clip, a couple of clips of me starting to notice some breeding behavior. I always pay attention to my fish. Uh, within the discus community, there's a saying that says, your fish are talking, are you listening? Okay, so let's talk about breeding conditions specifically since this is what's happening in my tank and I want to pass along a couple of tips to you guys. <clears throat> All right, so there's two parts to, to pH as far as discus and breeding conditions go, okay? And we're not focused so much on the pH, but the pH is a telltale sign of TDS or your total dissolved solids that are within the water, okay? Now, Breeders always adjust and lower their pHs, okay, especially if they're running a hatchery because they want the pH to be very low. When the TDS is too high, then the egg releases calcium ions, preventing further penetration of the sperm, which means that it blocks it, okay. This is why discus, altums, uh, German blue rams, other notable soft water fish are very difficult to breed under normal conditions. Why? Because the eggs are fighting you at a cellular level. They don't like hard water. Okay, They like soft water. Most people are on regular city water which tends to be very hard. Okay, That right there will... If my water was hard, all of the eggs would all be white because the, that means that the sperm had not penetrated any of them. The fact that I only have five eggs that are white shows you that the water conditions are perfect for breeding. This shows you what type of water parameters that discus want to have in order to be able to breed and the eggs are all fertilized, okay? So, here's the second problem with trying to get your discus to breed outside of normal discus breeding water conditions which would mean soft and acidic water with a very low TDS okay and that is if you want to start lowering your pH now you have to be very very careful here okay because lowering your pH and acclimating them is one thing to be lowering it for for, 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 for breeding conditions it needs to be a permanent fix because you don't want your pH sitting there bouncing up and down this is what kills discus which is what drives me nuts when people want to try to have them in regular tap water one minute and then try to switch them over to get them to breed. Obviously, you can start to see the problems. You're, you're causing fluctuations in pH. I won't get into the scientific term of globulins and all this. We will just say that lowering your pH too fast, okay, um, boils their blood and it does kill them. There you go. That's not what we're after, okay? This is why I say keep their biotope as close to what they would normally have in the wild as possible. Uses of peat moss, use of zoometic wood in the bottom, things that soften your water if you cannot afford an RODI unit. Want to touch on the pH, the TDS, the breeding, the eggs here. Guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If not, it's okay. Give me a thumbs down. I'm good with that too. Put your comments down below. Guys, you know what time it is. I'm out.